I want to talk about the end of the year because the end of the year is a, a good chance for us to sit down and evaluate how the year went and more importantly to set intentions, not resolutions, intentions for the new year. Uh, this came to me because I sent out an email or not an email, but we did a jump start this time last year. I don't know if you remember, but I invited people to write out what their um I invited people to write out the this year this past year, 2021. This was at the end of 2020. I invited them to write out 2021, their best year ever, and how what would have occurred for this to have been their best year ever. And someone wrote me a, an email telling me that they had achieved many of the things they had written down in their letter simply by writing the letter down and then reading it. I've said many times, and we talked about the book uh, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, that the greatest challenge we as human beings have is a uh, lack of focus. It's a lack of staying on point with something. I find it interesting in the latest upgrades to the Apple phone operating system, they now have a focus mode, which for some reason, my phone automatically goes into at night, goes into do not disturb, which I'm fine with. You know, my closest uh, people can still get through me, my favorites, but Apple is now helping people to focus more away from their phones. And I think because they see that at some point there's going to be some lawsuits from people just basically losing, spending their lives doom scrolling. Focus is one of the most important things we can do. So I want to share with you, it's the end of 2021. I wanted to invite you to take a moment to think back over this year and to think how you did your best and yet how you still could improve. There's that dialectic that I always like to discuss, how you did your best, and yet how you can still improve. This year has been a huge year of growth for me personally, and I am very, very grateful for that. A number of people have stepped in to support me in this process, and it has been just wonderful and continues to be. And I'm waking up happy. That's that's a really wonderful thing for me. Waking up happy in the mornings with things to look forward to. And I always struggle because of my, uh, uh, I can't think, like I said, the, the acronyms, post-traumatic stress disorder from childhood. I often uh, would wake up and I would not feel happy in the mornings. I'm grateful for that. And a number of other things. So look back over the year and ask yourself, how have you done well and how might you do better? And then I thought we would talk about a few things that help you in achieving this year coming up that you want to have happen. The first is, what if I gave you a magic wand, right? What if you could go around your home and go around your life and just go zzz, upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. And there's nothing wrong with what it is. You know, you don't want to upgrade everything. Hopefully your life is pretty good. But ask yourself, what are the things that would bring me joy if I changed, improved, et cetera, et cetera. And in my life, I don't just mean your physical things in your home. First thing that went through my mind was I just bought a new TV. So what would you use a magic wand and say, I'm going to create this. I'm going to create that. I would like this. I want that. I want the scale to read this, et cetera. So that's number one. Simply just go around and play the magic wand game and just play it in your mind. If I could change this or if I could upgrade this. All right. 
That's number one. The second thing is I want to teach you the power of the post-it note. One of the most successful people I've ever known in the real sense of the word success, that is physical fitness, but monetary, loved, loving relationship, got along great with his brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, respected in the community, just liked by everybody, was a guy whose name I won't mention because I've just told you too much about him, but he's a good friend. And I remember the first time I went to his house and I think we sat down outside, we had a beer and then he said, Hey, let's go to, uh, this place. They were having like a networking event. And I said, sounds great. And he said, I'm going to change my shirt. And for some reason I was talking to him and walked in with him. And as he opened up his closet to get his shirt and it was an accordion door, it was lined with post-it notes. And me being me, I asked him, what are the post-it notes for? He says, they're to remind me what's important in my life and my goals. And it occurred to me, this idea of drifting, this idea of lack of focus is the thing that keeps us from achieving what it is that we really, really want. It's not that we don't uh, necessarily uh, have ideas of things we might want to improve or to have differently in the next year, It's that we forget about them. They no longer become a daily basis regimen for us. What I did was, and by the way, this took me, oh gosh, if it took me five minutes, I'm lying, it took me less than five minutes. Nowadays, it is so much easier to keep your magic wand ideas in front of you, the things that you would like to see happen. And so I played the magic wand game, waved a few things. And I was like, you know, I really want a new car this year. This is the year for new car for me. And I know exactly what I want and blue Tesla X. And I also know what kind of boat I want. I'm ready to get a boat. I've lived here two years and I don't have a boat and I'm ready to get a boat. And I know what kind of boat I want. So anyway, I put these things down. I put down personal, professional, physical. It was all P's at first. I remember that personal, professional, physical, social, and goals. You know, things that, uh, no, that, that wasn't it, not goals. Anyway, personal, it just the main areas of your life, social, relationships. That was the other one. So I wrote, I just put those little headers down and underneath I listed three things I'd like to see improved in the next year and what that means to have them improved, what that means to have them the way I want them to be. Even I even put Teddy in there. The Teddy and I are getting along great. So that was step number one. This took me the bulk of the time. Okay. And again, we're talking less than five minutes, took me three minutes. And I did it in the notes app on my phone. I then got the calendar app on my phone. And every morning, cause I'm up at six, I can't stay in bed past six at six 15. It tells me first thing before I start doom scrolling myself or whatever <clears throat> to read these goals, did it this morning, took less than 30 seconds. Our challenge is not that we don't know what we want, friends, is we don't, we forget about it during the year. We get lulled into other things. I talked about the movie Up in one of my jumpstart descriptions, and there's a dog in there that has a cone around its neck or something that, collar, that you can hear it speak, its thoughts. And the dog speaks very cogently and intelligently, but then to remind you that it's a squirrel, a dog rather, it goes squirrel whenever a squirrel goes by. We're the same way. Um, I used to date a woman. She's now a good friend, a shiny object syndrome. She called it shiny object syndrome. I have shiny object syndrome. We all do. And that's why putting your ideas in an electronic post-it note, or a real post-it note and sticking it up in front of you so that you read it while you brush your teeth. Y'all, this is what super successful people do. This is what people who accomplish things. This is what people who don't put the same darn 
<laughs> resolutions every year and their lives don't improve. We need, I think it was Eric, not Aristotle, Da Vinci, who said that we need reminding as much as we do educating. Let me say that again. We need reminding as much as we do educating. So one, wave the magic wand. Two, post-it notes, post-it notes, post-it notes. Put it around. Put post-it notes. One of the things that helped me back when I was working to really get super lean was I took a picture of my feet on my scale, standing on my scale with my current weight, and then using the simplest of editing on my computer, I put a black thing over the current number and then I replicated the, the scale digits using a, a particular font and put the font I wanted. And that became something I looked at all the time. So we need to remind ourselves. Right now, my goals are flashing on my Amazon, you know what device right there. It's showing a picture of Stonehenge because I, it's on my bucket list. It's on my list to go to Stonehenge. So wave your wand, decide what you want, and then put reminders in front of you. And then the third thing I would say, which is most important, is begin to take action right now in little ways. Take action, take action, take action, take action. I would say that if you summarize Tony Robbins' teachings into two things, it's your state, in other words, how you feel inside, your emotions about what you're doing, and you get to control those emotions. It's, so number one is your emotions, and number two is the action that you take, your state and your actions. So beginning to take actions, little actions, little actions, little actions. I'll remind you that um, Tim Ferriss, author of The 4-Hour Workweek, The 4-Hour Body, the, one of the most popular podcasts, the guy is a success machine. He's driven. And uh, Tim Ferriss talks about a study that he read that said, if you would just shoot a picture of everything before you eat it or drink it, everything before you eat it or drink it, you get a plate of food, take a picture of it. You go and get a handful of almonds from the uh, cupboard, take a picture of it. If you will do that, just that mindfulness of it, that again, not drifting, but being focused just doing that will cause you to lose, on average, a pound a month, a total of 12 in a year. So give that some thought. It's just about being mindful. So number one, wave a magic wand. Number two, post-it notes, notes on your phone, remind yourself. And number three is begin to take action. And the main thing is don't choose huge stuff. I'm going to talk here about David. David has lost, what, 180 pounds? David Steele, the man of steel who's here with us right now. David, I think, has lost 180 pounds, if I'm not mistaken, or 150. Anyway, you can't decide I'm going to do that in six months. You've got to give yourself some time. You've got to give yourself some time. And that's the most important thing. Give yourself some time. You got a year, but if you do a little bit every day, it's amazing what you can do in a year. As uh, Earl Nightingale would say, <clears throat> I said once said, in a year, an hour a day, you could learn heart transplant surgery if you had to. All right. So since I said heart transplant surgery, everybody click share because we want your friends and family to have this advice and to Get them focused on having a positive and happy 2022. Remember, again, we're going to do our uh, Facebook tomorrow morning live via Zoom. What I'll do is I'll, I'll post the link and I'll post it in the morning and we will be live. So I want to see you live. Get up, put on some makeup. It's first, it's the end of the year. <laughs> and I'm talking to us guys too, everybody. So look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. No more, no more complaining. People, their lives are changing, we're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more, no more complaining people, their lives are changing, we're flying high.